In 1905, Einstein came up with the special theory of relativity. And really, this was a breakthrough in physics because prior to this, uh, most people believed in the ether. So they thought that light needed a, a medium to propagate through the ether. But uh, through experimentation, uh, this was proven false by uh, Michelson and Morley experiments. And Einstein um, used some of the Maxwell equations and derived what we now know as the special theory of relativity. So at the heart of it, there's two very important uh, postulates that it says. So the first is that the laws of physics are the same in all inertial reference frames. And inertial reference frame uh, just means a constant velocity and in a straight line. So uh, a non-inertial reference frame would be something with acceleration and uh, say with rotation. And the second postulate is that the speed of light, which is uh, a good approximation, which we use all the time, is uh, 3.00 times 10 to the 8 meters per second squared, or sorry, per second uh, velocity. And this is in a vacuum, and it is the same in all inertial reference frames. So it doesn't matter what speed you're traveling at, the speed of light is always the same. So if you're in a car uh, going near, or a plane going near the speed of light or a spaceship, and you turn on a flashlight, the flashlight doesn't have your initial velocity plus the speed of light, it is just the speed of light. And so this uh, brings about two very important equations. The first is time dilation which uh, we'll talk about, and the second is length contraction. But first we'll deal with time dilation. So as you approach uh, relativistic speeds and you start going faster and faster, then time starts to alter. And there's, there's two things we uh, reference time to. So the proper time, which is the time of the observer, uh, so the person on the spaceship measuring their clock, and then there is uh, the time uh, as viewed by an observer watching the spaceship uh, travel, so say from Earth looking at the spaceship. And so in time dilation we use this gamma here, is a, a popular symbol to represent 1 divided by the square root of 1 minus velocity squared over the speed of light squared. So I want to run through, through an a easy problem just to get you used to this. So, uh, say you have a question, which is, what is the period of a pendulum um, traveling with, uh, okay, so a pendulum traveling with a velocity of 0 0.98 c. And so this is just 98% uh, times the speed of light. And it really simplifies the equations, that's why we do it in this, uh, this form. And so, uh, simply, the time observed by the observer, uh, external observer viewing, is gamma times the proper time. The proper time is the person in the spaceship uh, traveling at that velocity. And so, uh, we just can write this as the proper time divided by square root of 1 minus v squared over c squared. As uh, another way you'll commonly see this. But uh, okay, so uh, to plug in some numbers, we'll work down here. So really, all we're doing now is saying that the time observed by the external uh, observer. Okay, and the other thing we need to know is that the period of this pendulum, so the period of the pendulum, and period is just uh, denoted by a t, but we'll say it is 5.0 seconds. And then we want to figure out what is the period of the pendulum observed by the external observer. So that will be equal to the proper time times gamma. And so the proper time is, well, the person on the spaceship, they measure the period to be 5.0 seconds. 
And this is just going to be times gamma. So 1 divided by the square root of 1 minus 0 0.98 um, c squared, which is the velocity, divided by c squared. So we can write this another way as 5.0 seconds times 1 divided by the square root of 1 minus 0 0.98 squared times c squared because remember uh, it just distributes out uh, so the square of 0 0.98 and the square of c divided by c squared so now these will cancel and you'll see why we work with uh, this notation here because it makes it a lot easier so this is just going to be equal to 5.0 seconds times 1 over the square root of 1 minus 0 0.98 squared. And this is equal to 5.0 seconds. And the units actually canceled here, so this is now unitless. And uh, if you put this into your calculator, you get 5.03. And so 5.0 uh, seconds times 5.03 is equal to, we're working with two significant figures, so 25 seconds. So this means that uh, the person on the spaceship will observe the period of the pendulum to be 5 seconds, but the observer, the external observer viewing the events, um, say on Earth, will view the period of the pendulum to be 25 seconds. So this is just a really simple equation just to uh, get you used to how to plug it into the formulas. Okay, thank you. Have an excellent day.